Hello all my truth seekers, welcome, 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 this is Keisha. In this video, I will be cracking the unanswered details of the possibilities. And let me tell you, this is scary and sick with liars, vultures, and pedos maybe surrounding poor Whitney Houston and of course the late Teresa Graves. May they both rest in peace. Please note that this is all alleged. I've never met any of these people. I've deeply researched all of my information. This is a trigger warning. In this video, I may be talking about or showing sensitive material about some subjects or topics that may be disturbing or upsetting or may bring forth some troubling memories, as you've read in the description or title. With that said, either in the video now or brace yourself. Aside from that, enjoy. We all love Winnie Houston. She's an icon, a beauty, a soulful voice, a stage presence like no other. She's a legacy. She's a figure of what truthful singing really is, something that is missing today. But with all this flair and character attributes and some innocence, but there's a question that I've always been pondering. Who is her mother? I mean, really, who is her mother? Looking at mother and daughter pictures, you see similarities and related talents, aside from the singing talents, etc. However, the facial features of young Sissy and young Whitney show some disconnection and not many similarities. Even with their hair texture, Whitney has Indian hair and her mother didn't. An alleged father who claimed to be part Indian without any evidence and her sibling Michael Houston were born from the same father and his hair didn't have it either. All don't have the same hair texture as Whitney. Whitney Houston looks drastically different bringing us to the question again, who is really Whitney Houston's mother? Usually when celebrities showcase their parents, you can see what facial features come from what parent. It's also fun to see what your favorite celebrity got their facial features from. You can also read all of the interesting comparisons in the comment section. But when you look at Whitney and her parents, you don't see that. Why? Now, I'm doing only part of the bio about Whitney Houston. I'm getting straight to the point of this video, but I will briefly describe Teresa Graves, who was born on January 10th, 1948 in Houston, Texas. She was born middle child to Marshall and Willie Graves, who were allegedly born and raised in Mississippi. They later traveled to Houston, Texas in 1962 around the first trimester of Washington High School for Teresa and, of course, to get out of the crazy Mississippi. Yes, but they still went back for family vacations and holidays like most Negro families did back then, allegedly. Teresa graduated from Washington High School in 1966 in Texas, three years after Winnie Houston was born. But before and after Teresa graduated from high school, she was in the Doodle Town Pipers group. A group of initially 30 members was reduced 20 members. Teresa was among the original members. This group was called the Easy Listening Group, a famous genre in the 1950s and the early 1960s, and signed with Epic and Sony Music Entertainment based in New York City. They had to travel there plenty of times as a class slash group. The group took off between 1966 and 1970, around the time when Teresa dropped from the group just before graduating from high school in 1966, and her family decided to move to Los Angeles. Then she appeared in many TV shows from 1969 to 1974 and dropped her album back in 1970. Then she landed her TV show, Get Chrissy Love, in 1974 and was nominated for a Golden Globe Award in 1975 for Best TV Actress for that TV show. And later in 1977, she won a TPD overall for Best Foreign Actress. Yes, she was doing it. Her career looked great until later when she was baptized. She became a Jehovah Witness in 1974. She campaigned to bring awareness to the persecution of witness in 
Malawi under the leader of Hastings Kamuzu Branda, as it says in various blogs. I am not sure if it's true though. I know that after her show was canceled and her album was not doing so well, I couldn't find much work from her since 1975 after joining the Jehovah's Witness. I don't know. Coincidence? You make the call. As we know, Whitney Houston was born on August 9th, 1963 in New York Beth Israel Hospital in New Jersey, now called New York Beth Israel Medical Center. Whitney was the youngest of her three older brothers, Michael Houston, born August 14, 1961, and Gary Garland, born October 12, 1957, and a paternal half-brother from her father's side, John Houston III, born 1943, who died 2021. Sister Houston, a.k.a. Emily Drinkard, born September 30th, 1933, who also went by Cicely Blair, Cicely Drinkard, Sissy Drinkard Houston, Sissy Houston, spelled S-I-S-S-I-E, of course, Houston. She went by many others, too, still trying to figure out why. It was like scavenging through a con artist's briefcase of different alias. Seriously. I also tried to call the hospital where Whitney Houston was born, but they don't keep records that long. Apparently they moved or stored somewhere else after 15 years. I got several answers. <sighs> but with my phone, Wi-Fi, and computer being hacked, who freaking knows? Whenever I call out to anyone, they're Filipinos or someone from another country, whether it's for a bill research, for a video, or a bill collector, it doesn't freaking matter who I call, but we're not talking about that. So Sorry about that. Sorry for venting. Now, back to Sissy Houston and John Houston Jr., the second born in 1920, whom she later married and had two more kids. One day, Winnie Houston in 1963, Sissy was allegedly 30 years old when she had Winnie, and John was 43 years old. Oh, yes. Now, you all have to understand that the year 1963 was the busiest year for Sissy. She was seen on many TV shows. She was touring with her siblings called the Drinkard Sisters, later with the Sweet Inspirations and pursuing her solo career. There's not one picture of her ever being pregnant any time that year. She claimed to have been really big and overdue. Trust me, I looked and looked. So let's try something else. It was rumored that Hansi Horny John Houston Jr. the second became Sissy's manager, whom presently was married to his soon-to-be ex-wife Elsie Hamilton. Of course, he later became their manager of Drinkard Singers, the same group both Sissy and soon-to-be ex-wife Elsie were in. Oh yes. During the early years of their relationship, John was still married to his first wife, Elsie Hamilton, as I just said. After Sissy's first marriage to Freddie Garland ended in divorce in 1964, Sissy and John married the following month. John Houston Jr. II was a former Army veteran who served his country during World War II. Between 1939 and 1945, he then worked at Mississippi NAACP as a field secretary for Megard Evers in the 50s. He later worked as a taxi and truck driver when he met Sissy in the early 60s. He first entered the entertainment business managing his nieces-in-law's vocal group called the Gospelaries in 1959. After his wife formed the Sweet Inspirations, he was their manager until Sissy left the group in 1969 to start her solo career. Sometime later, John survived a near-fatal heart attack in 1976 and then John and Sissy's marriage then turned volatile, and by 1977, they agreed to separate legally, though they remained married until 1991. You see, and it, I'm saying this verbatim, okay? It says this, in 1963, then about to give birth to daughter Whitney Houston, she, as in Sissy, joined the Sweet Inspirations with Doris Troy and niece Dee Dee Warwick, Penis. Even though you hear like three or four or five different scenarios to this whole joining Sweet Inspirations group. Yeah. Now, 
There's also a video of Sissy singing with her siblings on a TV gospel time show recorded and aired in 1963. As you can see, she was not pregnant. Now, I do know that it was later in the year when Sissy joined the group Sweet Inspirations because, as I said before, it was after she was allegedly pregnant when John divorced his ex-wife, Elsie, in 1964. So let's do the math. Whitney was born on August 9, 1963, minus nine months, so you can say probably maybe a little bit over nine months, close to 10 months, conception, allegedly around December or late November of 1962, so around the holidays. It's winter in New York from about October to about April, depending, so it's winter. If you see the video recorded in 1963, Sissy is wearing a wedding ring. But early you heard me say, and this is, was written slash reported everywhere. This is more factual than that. Join a Sweet Inspirations group. Sissy says she was about to give birth to Whitney when she formed or joined the group Sweet Inspirations. So that leaves us somewhere between July and August 1963. But Sissy has a wedding set on. But she and John didn't get married until 1964, and these are record facts. A year after Whitney was born, he was still married to his first wife, Elsie. Now here's another one. Despite my reading somewhere else that they married in 1959, but that's not true because John was still married to his first wife, and that's record. Until 1964. And the TV Gospel Time show only ran from 1962 to 1965. Sissy was married to Freddie Garland until 1957. That leaves between 1957 and to about 1960s. And we already know that John was in Mississippi in the 1950s because he was a field secretary for Mega Devers. Aside from going to Mississippi or Atlanta, Georgia, or whatever, for holidays over the years, and he didn't make it to New York until about the 1960s. Sissy left her siblings group, The Drinkards, in 1963 to sing again in The Sweet Inspirations. Not to mention Dabble in her solo career, where she dropped a single in 1963 under the name Cicely Blair called This Is My Vow with Eminem Records. Oh yes. Now back to the video. Now, I managed to find the archives and the number VM1404A. In the corner, it is an archive number, as you can see here. Now, that means, as fact, this video was aired in 1963, but they were listed as the daytime singers instead of the drinkers' sisters. Probably a miss error, no big deal. The last show, number 14, recorded was Frank Davis on December 15, 1962 which didn't air until February 10th, 1963. The episodes went by air dates. They aired almost every Sunday, recorded two episodes a day. They had a total of 66 episodes. The first show aired on October 7, 1962, as you can see here from their um, records, and recorded about two sets per choir or group, depending on the choirs or groups meaning the first show was recorded in August or September of 1962. So by the end of November, they aired about eight episodes. The last show aired on December 1962, making it the 12th episode. They didn't start taping again until January 19 of 1963. The first show aired on January 27th, 1963, making it the 13th episode. The next show didn't air until February 10th, 1963, making it the 14th episode, which is what I said earlier. The next show after didn't air until February 24th, 1963, making it the 15th episode. Now, please note, break period. Okay, it was a break period here. The show took off after that, hitting more cities. Oh, yes, they went from um, being broadcast in about 10 cities or 10 states to almost off cities and states. And they were getting famous overseas as well. So they took off and more stations was picking them up. Now, the host James Cleveland was also in the studio recording his hit song, Peace Be Still, one of my favorite songs, released in September of 1963. Not to mention civil rights was on the rise. 
Mississippi NAACP Field Secretary Mega Evers, remember um, John Houston used to work for him as a field secretary as well, was assassinated outside his Mississippi residence in June of 1963. And there were several marches between March 1963 and July 1963. Also, on June 11, Governor George Wallace of Alabama defied federal district court orders when he stood in the way of two black students, Vivian Malone and James Hood, trying to enter the University of Alabama to enroll in classes. State troopers stood by his side while press members recorded the entire incident. Soon after, President Kennedy federalized the state's National Guard to force the governor's compliance, and Malone and Hood became the first black students to attend that school. Oh, yes. Meanwhile, the next show, episode 16, didn't air until July 28, 1963, meaning it may have been taped in May of 1963. Remember, they always record a tape like two months prior to the show being aired, which would make her, if, if Sissy was pregnant, which would make Sissy about six to almost seven months pregnant. Here are some women who are six months pregnant. It's various sizes. Whitney used to sing backup for many groups throughout her teenage years. She was in the studio recording her first album between 1983 and 1984. It was released on February 14, 1985. She was 21 years old. But also remember, she was recording a lot younger than that all through her teenage years. I've been working in the studio since I was 12. Uh, my mom took me to the studio and uh, I've been working professionally since I was 12 years old. You know, and I said, I want to be a singer. You know, she said, you want to be a singer? You really do? I said, yeah, I really do. So she said, okay, let's go. And she took me by my hand. And, and that was it, but I'm, I, I feel no pressure from those two. I mean, I, I have nothing to prove. I give myself and, and that's it. That's all I have to give. It's not all it's cracked up to be. <laughs> it ain't all the glamour and, and all that stuff. It's hard work. It's a lot of work. But when you love it, 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 it feels good. My face being shown all the time uh, certainly doesn't hurt at all. And uh, when uh, people, people in, in, in the modeling business really never knew that I did sing, so when they found out that I did sing, it was like, oh, so besides that, you can sing, so let's let's deal with that too, you know? So it was it's just one feeds off another, you know. They're both they both give give one another. <laughs> I don't I don't really know how, how I really would describe myself as, as a singer. I just I just sing, you know. <laughs> That's what I do, I just sing. Teresa Graves retired from Hollywood business in 1983, two years before Whitney's album release and during the recording process. Why? She claimed to have stopped to care for her mother and devote her time to her faith. But she died, unfortunately, on October 10, 2002, when her home caught fire due to a space heater, whereas Teresa was found unconscious in her bedroom before being rushed to the hospital, where she died. She was 54 years old. Many people saw her death as suspicious. Teresa coincidentally quit Hollywood while Whitney was recording her first album. Teresa died in 2002, coincidentally around when Whitney's father, John, tried to sue her. Also, we know now Whitney's marriage was in turmoil and she was heavily on drugs, allegedly around 2002. I mean, she did many interviews and she released a new album called Just Whitney in 2002. We also know Whitney became oddly estranged from her parents around this time as well. We also know that Sissy is still living at the age of 90 years old, 11 years after her alleged close and only daughter died in 2012. Quick note, usually if a mother or daughter or husband or wife dies and they were close to their spouse, child, etc., they die within five years of one another. Anything longer usually means they weren't soulmates or that close. It may have been a facade, or it must be secrets the family don't know about their relationships. When souls are connected, souls can live or die too long apart. Oh, yes. Also in 1963, Teresa was 15 and John was 43 years old. This was not consensual. Please stop saying they had an affair. 
As we saw in Whitney's Houston documentary, A and Through the Grapevine, John was a player, among many other names. He loved women and rumored young girls too. We also learned that Teresa's family frequently visited Mississippi and Atlanta, Georgia for the holidays. So did John. We also know Teresa traveled to New York as a teenager with the group she was in called Doodle Towns Pipers. We also know Sissy was hardly home. She was touring and singing in various places. We also know for sure that Sissy was not pregnant in 1963, despite her book saying she was overdue when Winnie was born. And then it was another story. How It was just too many stories. And she was huge. But claims she remembers her water breaking and being driven to Presbyterian Hospital. But she revealed in interviews later saying that she had Whitney at New York Beth Israel Hospital. She also claims that she doesn't remember having Whitney because she was knocked out. But a description seems more of an adoption than an actual birth. Listen to this. Part 1 Chapter 2 A Child of Newark It was a hot August night in 1963 when Niffy was born. I was doing session work as a background singer, and despite being overdue and big as all get out, I'd worked a full day. My husband, John, picked me up at the studio in Manhattan and drove me home to our apartment in Newark, New Jersey. But not long after we walked in the front door, my water broke. So it was right back out the door as John put me in the car and hurried to Presbyterian Hospital. From the moment I found out I was pregnant, I had hoped this baby would be a girl. I already had two boys, my sons, Gary and Michael, and I knew this would be my last child. I was tired of having babies, and I surely didn't want to go through what my mother had endured. She had eight children by the time she turned 30. Three was enough for me. But I desperately wanted this last one to be a girl. Although personally, I was convinced that I was about to have another big-headed boy. At that time, of course, you couldn't find out until the baby was born. There were old wives' tales about being able to tell, depending on whether you carried the baby high or low, but nobody really knew. What I did know was that this baby already seemed to love music. All during my pregnancy, I'd been doing session work, singing backup for artists such as Solomon Burke, Wilson Pickett, the Isley Brothers, Aretha Franklin, and my niece, Dionne Warwick. And the whole time, that baby never stopped moving inside me. Sometimes it even seemed to be moving to the music. So one thing I knew for certain, that child was going to have rhythm. We got to the hospital and checked in, but I don't remember much after that. This was a big baby, and the delivery wasn't easy. After hours of pain, the doctors gave me an anesthetic to knock me out, and when I finally woke up, John came into the room and told me we had a baby girl. I don't know why, but I didn't believe him. I thought he was just playing a joke on me. I'm telling you, sissy, it's a girl, he said, laughing. Stop that mess, John, you're lying. John always liked to tease and joke, but I wasn't having any of that right now. No, really, he insisted. It's a girl. And she's gorgeous, chimed in a nurse who was standing there. Well, there was one way to find out. Where is she? I asked. It turned out the hospital staff was taking her around to show her off. The nurses were just carrying my little baby all over the hospital floor, showing her to their co-workers and everyone else. It was as if she belonged to the public the very second she was born. I was so mad. Here I was, lying exhausted in a hospital bed, and I couldn't even see my own child because everyone else had to get a look at her first. You better go and get my baby, I told John. One of the nurses hustled off, and a few minutes later, I finally saw my baby girl for the first time. Someone had already tied a little pink bow in her hair, and she was the most beautiful little thing I'd ever seen. I held her in my arms, and I couldn't believe it. 
She was eight pounds and four ounces, and she had everything. A head full of hair, eyelashes, fingernails, everything. I was so excited, so happy, that I burst into tears of joy. I named her Whitney Elizabeth. Whitney, the name of a TV character I liked, because I thought it was classy and a little different. And Elizabeth, after John's mother. I was beyond thrilled that I'd gotten my wish to have a girl, and I wanted Nippy to be a special kind of child. She was my princess, my perfect little jewel, and from the very beginning I wanted to protect her. I didn't want my sweet baby ever to know hardship if I could help it, because hardship was something I had learned plenty about. So the questions are, did Teresa give as a teenager while vacationing in Mississippi or Atlanta with family? Or did she get in New York while on a class outing with group Doodle Town Pipers? Did John convince Sissy to take Whitney in as their own to hide his and to save their careers? Just like Viola Davis did with Denzel Washington in the movie Fences, remember? Was Teresa forced to leave Hollywood with compensation for her silence? It would have been a matter of time before Teresa and Whitney crossed paths. Did Teresa reach out to Whitney Houston during the uprising of her career, Whitney's career? And was silence for good in 2002 via a hit from Hansy Horny John, who died a year later in 2003? I mean, John was a war veteran and rich. I'm sure he knew somebody. Is this one of the reasons why Whitney distanced herself from her parents? Why does Whitney look dramatically different from her parents? Hair and all. These questions will remain unanswered, but I hope this video will answer many. May Teresa, Whitney, and Bobby Christina rest in peace. Well, that's it. Let me know what you all think below. On that note, don't forget to subscribe, share, and like, and hit that bell so you get notifications for when I do post more videos. See you all later. Bye.